Jim Whitaker, our guest here, is the president of the Berkeley County Commission. How does the who does the county use for health insurance? Uh, we have uh, Highmark, uh, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Highmark, Blue Cross. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you guys do not use the, the standard state system? P- that's no, available. not the PEIA, no. Do you know why the decision was made to not go through that system, Jim? Uh, because of the uh, the complexity of what PEIA had in our locale, being able to go across the state lines and, and seek other co- or other medical providers. Um, let's move off of health care and, sure. and get to the Eastern Regional Jail. Because the legislature uh, discussed that and came up with some ideas of tackling the problems there, uh, Jim, and that also affects some of the county costs too. Because there was some uh, some decisions made as to how the city and the county will now interact with jail costs. Yeah, the the biggest thing is is uh, is our cost for the jail system. We've always budgeted uh, right around three million dollars a year. Now, with all the programs that we have been implementing, whether it be through um, uh, home confinement and things like that uh, through uh, Tim Zaya's office that we have been able to reduce our jail cost continuously over the last seven or eight years but however we still budget it and we're hoping that uh, through the grants that we get that provides the services that we can give to a, a person that a non-violent you know mm-hmm. situation where they're taken back out and given their uh, status back at their home they're monitored and then every day that they they do have to go through a program check so and and what is the scenario between the city of martinsburg and berkeley county when it comes to the erj and housing people who are arrested in the city Uh, well the scenario is is that i think there'll be better records kept of who does the arresting who does the um i guess the um I don't want to call it conviction because they're not convicted or indictments. Incarceration. Incarcerations. Uh, that will have to be kept better uh, accounting procedures for that as far as how many days in, when will, uh, I guess, the time start, and 24 hours versus 12 hours of incarceration, things like that. And I'm not trying to start a fight between the county and the city. You folks have done a good enough job on that on your own. <laughs> Uh, but you're, you're welcome. <laughs> it's good for us. It's good entertainment. Good radio. But prior prior to the changes, now was the city paying any of the ERJ costs for as someone who was arrested in the city? That and, and or was it all getting billed to the county? It's a you, good question. I, I I really didn't you know wasn't given that information. But from what I am assuming, unless my phone kind of tells me different, I would say that we were the uh, the sole source for the for the out accounting. Um, depth or so need. this might get you a little financial relief in that yes. scenario. Yes. All right. Very good. Uh, how closely do you do you pay attention to the staffing issues at the ERJ, Jim? Uh, not too closely. I, I probably need to be a little bit more closer attention to it. But I think with any um, public position that you know the state pays for, even through you know the health department. The their salaries are, are low compared to the area that they live in. Uh, could it be something better that needs to be worked on? Most definite. So uh, as far as the staffing goes, I think that um, there's been a couple uh, ideas thrown out there that might be National Guardsmen maybe coming in. Um, I just heard that. Uh, whether it's going to be true or not, I don't know. Matt Miller. I, I want to go back to the fact that it is a regional jail, and we talked about the city and the county versus cost. What region, um, what other counties basically send folks to the eastern regional jail, and, and are they responsible then for whatever cost for whatever prisoners or inmates are held there? It's You know, there it was described to me as many penitentiaries. So I would say the eastern regional jail is the eastern region, Morgan, Berkeley, Jefferson, I um, but, you know, when you get right down to it, if, if somebody comes in from another state and commits a crime, that's where they're right. going to go to. So do we go back after, you know, that state to be, okay. you know, to be compensated? No, I, I think it's, you know, it's all Berkeley counties. Um, so with I-81 and drugs mm-hmm. and things that come through from Baltimore or New York or wherever, mm-hmm. we're not reaching out to them going, hey, your people are coming through our territory. It's a bill that the county just has to absorb. That's pretty much it. And consequently, I'm sure you don't get a knock on the door from many other jurisdictions around the country asking mm-hmm. you to pay their jail bill, right? No, no, we don't. Yeah. Or do they come with a check in hand and say, here, this is... <laughs> <laughs> My sheriff sent this with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a blessing and a curse, in a way, to yeah, have yeah. a facility like the ERJ here. It, you know, it, it's good to, to 
have that, right? But at the same time, it, it adds additional costs. It does. You know, the, the good side is, is that you don't have the hardened criminals out still walking on the mm -hmm. streets every day. Uh, the sad side is, is that, you know, we have to pay for it. Is there is there any income source that comes from the the jail complex? It's a pretty big hunk of real estate. Or is there do they pay rent or is there in, uh, property no, taxes or anything? No, no, it's just an all cost. Who put it there? Well, it's a good question. That was probably before I got elected. <laughs> <laughs> is that a I state think, decision I, that I just think, decided yeah, this is the place yeah, for it? Yeah, there's this. I think the state had decided many years ago that the the regional jails would be placed here in the in the locales that they are. So. Do the other counties locally chip in? It's mm, a good question. I really, I, I don't think so. Because I, I believe if somebody gets arrested in Jefferson or Morgan County, they wind up at the ERJ too. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I would. Uh, that'd be a good question. I'd tell you. Well, if my phone vibrates. I'm sure if somebody's listening. They're going to tell me. So yeah. All right, uh, Jim. I know you want to talk about the air show a little bit too. Yeah, the deal's coming on in, uh, in about ten minutes uh, sure. or so to talk more about that. But I know this is a particular point of pride to you. It is. Yeah. The uh, the air show at the Martinsburg Airport is this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. The weather. Uh, just looking at the my my weather app and. It's not looking the best, but you know that's the one thing that we always have to you know, to plan against. Summer is, is, is summertime weather. The the thunderstorms will show up, but uh, for the 100th birthday of the centennial of Martinsburg Airport is uh, well, it actually was in June, but we're celebrating it this weekend. Uh, the show acts are, are going to be uh, from all over. We were trying to get an airplane, um, every airplane that was at the Martinsburg Air National Guard. Uh, that they had in their fleet, whether it be a P-51 Mustang or the C-119 Boxcar, the 121 Connies, uh, the 130s. We're going to have quite a few of them come in, uh, you know, that, we, uh, that we've we asked to, uh, for the commemorative Air Force to show up. Um, but there are a couple of the aerobatic acts. Uh, um, Mark Meredith, who has what's called a super chipmunk, and Nick can, I don't want to spoil all of Nick's stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a, a wonderful event uh, for, for the county again. And I hope that uh, it will be a, a an annual event that we will continue to to, to have. So, are you doing doing anything special with uh, with your property during the day? The uh, no, no, nothing special. I think uh, park here for twenty bucks. Nothing no, like that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if uh, I think uh, my mother and father in law, they're, they're they'll be there with my wife for a little bit. But uh, I think I'm kind of over in that performance box and. Uh, I hope I don't create too much of an issue. But uh, Do you have a pilot's license, Jim? I do, yeah. I actually learned uh, when I was in high school. I was. Uh, it probably kept me out of more trouble than, than, uh, than I was really in. But, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, I've had it since I uh, got my ticket since 1981. What do you fly? Uh, small airplanes, you know, just the three, four-seaters that, uh, that are out there. I have a... Uh, uh, an interest in a it's called a Cessna Cardinal. It's a it's just a four seater, but mostly hauls two people. So, I had a neighbor. He's since moved, and maybe this is related to that. I don't know, but we went up in his Cessna uh, one day, and I was getting he was doing little dives and rolls. Me, yeah. me and another neighbor, and I was ready to lose it all over his his plane. Yeah. And uh, he said, "Here, why don't you take the wheel? It might make you feel a little bit better." And uh, we were over Harper's Ferry, and I can remember flying this plane and looking down going, I have no idea how to fly a plane. <laughs> this isn't like a car where I can hit the brakes and pull over and go, you take it. Like, I don't know what I'm doing up here, but thanks, thanks for giving me the wheel. I yeah. wouldn't do the same if it was you. But, I, yeah, I, but it was pretty neat. Uh, it, you have to stay current. And, and I had uh, had a lapse for about 20 years of, of not flying, but I, I was always been involved in, in mm -hmm. some aspect of it. Uh, it, it's a little different uh, coming back into it. The regulations and the you know all the the, the 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 specialized areas that you can fly into that you're not supposed to. It depends on where the president's at and mm -hmm. things like that. That's gotten more serious. It's yeah. important to get that right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you just don't want a 16 F16 coming up beside you, going pointing down to the yeah. ground to say get you know down now uh, yeah you, you mentioned getting into it as a teen were you a part of the civil air patrol i, I was okay. you know uh we um uh like i said i just live right beside the airport but uh, civil air patrol was a was a big part of uh, my growing up um my first airplane ride was i think i was 14 years old and it was in ocean city maryland I rode my bicycle over to the airport watched the guys pick up the banners and tow them up and down the beach and there was a sign there that said uh, airplane rides for 15 dollars and, you know, of course, it 
14 years old. I didn't have $15. It was only 40% of the cost of you being born, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was a good point. But uh, th this guy come walking out, and he says, you want to go for a ride? I said, well, I don't have $15. And and uh, he said, well, how much you got? And I think I had like $12, $13 in my pocket. And he said, come on, let's go. That's enough. So that, that little interest that he showed me, um, and when we got up in the air and started flying, he said, here, you need to take the wheel. And I was going, really? He said, yeah. <laughs> so I got to fly the plane, and, and then the addiction started. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's fun. Like, Rob, what you said, and, and, and Jim, what you're saying, uh, our two oldest sons went through Civil Air Patrol mm -hmm. out at the, the Eastern Regional Airport, and our oldest son was 15, mm -hmm. and he was going out for flights uh, on a Saturday, and he comes back from those flights, and we're talking, and he's like, yeah, I flew a plane today. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you can't even drive a car. And he talked about, you know, look, I didn't get to take off or land, but yeah, right. once we got up, our pilot says, all right, you yeah. take the wheel, and I'm going to give you directions, and and he really, really enjoyed it. It is. It you know it's it's expensive. Uh, so you know you don't uh, you, you don't get to do it every day unless you're a professional at it, uh, or you're doing it for an airline. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I had uh, I had a wonderful uh, time learning how to fly. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. not old enough to drive a car, but I brought yeah. my bicycle to the airport to, to be able to go for a lesson <laughs> or two, and that was that was kind of different. My fa <clears throat> my father was a naval aviator, and he was born in the twenties. And when he was twelve, thirteen years old, he paid for his flying lessons by spinning the the Prop. propellers mm -hmm. on the old biplanes that were out at the airport mm -hmm. you know switch on contact kind of thing yeah. really important to keep your foot out of the way by the way now, I, got, I, got, I, have tell, <laughs> yeah. I have to tell this story my uh, my father-in-law who's 97 he'll be 98 in uh, on christmas uh, meredith he uh, he'd learned how to fly when he was in i guess oh golly days a long time ago and his instructor was, uh, he told me, was Charlie Harrell. No, I don't know. Probably y'all don't remember Charlie Harrell. Mm -hmm. But the, his claim to fame was is that um, he ended up passing away. And then when the, the undertaker or the Browns came to pick him up and they got him back to the, to the funeral home and they unzipped the bag, Charlie was alive. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's, it, 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 I'm, Victorian. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the short story, so I imagine it's it's it, it and not quite, happy and not, well. It, I think he was partially went into a diabetic coma and all mm -hmm. respiratory, you know, went really wow. slow. And, and but when the when I, they said because he was in the bag and breathing his you know his, his uh, rebreathing oxygen. He came back to life, and when he unzipped the bag, he was alive. And oh my goodness! So you know, wow. but, but he taught my father-in-law how to fly. So before or after? Oh, the way before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Was, that, that's that's the story. So. Will the Civil Air Patrol be a part of oh, the yeah. air show? Yes, then, and okay. well, I, they they won't be taken, you know, to the right. skies. But but they do have their airplane there based at yeah. Martinsburg. So yeah, they'll they will be a part of it. I, uh, I hope good. so. They've been invited, and and some of the cadets. Uh, usually volunteer to, right. to help with uh, help with some of the uh, the parking and things yeah. like that. So, uh, Jim, before you go, any trail updates uh, for us? No, nothing, uh, nothing major going on. You know, Berkeley County is is a busy county. Um, it, whether it be good or bad, uh, I, I just uh, I like the progress that we have, but there are always our growing pains. So, mm. and I just hope everybody is. Uh, patient with uh, with things but however the uh, the roundabouts i've heard a lot more positive comments about the roundabouts in inwood since they've mm -hmm. opened up traffic still flows but they still can be intimidating so mm -hmm. just you don't want to go through them 50 miles an hour 15 <laughs> 20 just, just close your eyes just, yeah, it's just, so much easier when you close your <laughs> eyes yeah and just just feel <laughs> the wheels. just feel the curb bump a little bit then just go the opposite way so. yeah the great thing is nobody really knows how to do a roundabout so you just kind of work your way through <laughs> yeah just point. Just point. Just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Uh, Jim, good to see you again. Good to be here. Thanks again, and uh, I hope uh, hope everybody can make it out to the air show. So. Good to uh, have you uh, aboard here. Thanks so much. Uh -huh. And uh, that's Jim Whitaker, president of the Berkeley County Commission.